All right. Uh, got another project for R two D two Electronics today. Printed Droid Shop has an article on using an ESP module as a replacement for the XB Wi-Fi module. So most people have been using uh, a Wi-Fi module called XB in their R2-D2s um, which offers the ability to connect to R2-D2 with an app on your phone that will control body panels, sounds, uh, and sequences and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, but the XB can be hard to get because they run out of stock. It's also, I believe, around $20. And I think you might even need a separate board to program it. Not exactly sure. Because when I saw this article, I remembered that I had made a clock. This is a 3D printed clock with the electronics uh, that I found on Thingiverse that hooks up to weather services, news services, or you can see Bitcoin services, which I just do because I think Bitcoin is cryptocurrency is humorous. Um, yeah, so it uh, gets the time and the weather and it alternates and it gets that information from an ESP8266 chip that's in the back of the clock exactly like this. When I say exactly like this, I mean exactly like this because there was a link in the Thingiverse um, page that contains the files for this clock to buy the hardware on Amazon and I clicked buy it and I didn't pay attention to the fact that it wasn't just for one of these ESP8266 boards it was three so I ended up with three of these and I only needed one, and so I put the other two away, thinking, well, maybe there's some other cool project that I can do using an ESP8266 Wi-Fi board. Um, I never did find another project that interested me, so I just put these away. And then when I found that it can replace the XB, I realized that I have one and it's something I should try because I believe I paid about five dollars for mine and it would save me some money on buying uh, an XB. Now granted um, again this is printed droid and I have a purchase of their Astrocoms unit that has the option to use an ESP instead of an XB, which I went for. So supposedly, if I ever get my order, um, it will have an ESB on the Astrocoms board. But like I said, uh, it's been over five months. I still don't have my order. I've moved on and I've bought the individual parts to negate the need for the board that I ordered that I haven't got. So I pulled out my uh, my boards. Uh, the one I have is actually not shown here. Um, the one I have looks very much like the ESP32 board pictured there, or this one actually looks more like this one here. But it is an 8266. Now I don't know the difference between the 32 and the 66. This is just the one that I had on hand, and so that's what I decided to use. So, it's connected to my computer with a micro USB cable, which is humorous to me because yesterday I made a video about programming the Arduino Mega 2560, and that uses a USB A to B cable, this uses a USB-A to USB micro connector. And I've also built Markduino boards 
and they use a USB-A to USB mini connectors. So it's like I have used the entire set of connectors here. I guess I haven't used a USB-C yet, but um, yeah, anyway, humorous anecdote there, I thought. So I plugged it in and went to program it based on the information on the printed droid website. Uh, but the problem is my computer wouldn't see it. So here we've got included on this web page is instructions for installing this. Um, so you can use the same Arduino IDE software as in my previous video that I used to program the Arduino Mega 256080K. It uses the same Arduino program to transfer, compile the sketch, and send it to the ESP8266 or ESP8232. So uh, I basically followed the video and what it does is it adds the board option of ESP8262 or ESP8232 ESP32 uh, to your Arduino programming suite so that you can choose that board and compile and send code to it. Um, but the problem I was having then is that my computer wasn't seeing it so I had to download a driver for my computer to see it which is kinda why I'm posting this. I needed to install the driver for Windows CP210 and here it is from Silicon Labs and how did I know that that's what I needed um, okay I can't tell actually by holding the phone but right in front of that USB micro connection there's a chip I can't tell if I'm holding it upside down or right side up but there's a surface the surface mount black chip there it says CP210 on it so I knew that that was the interface that USB is using so I needed to download the CP210 drivers for Windows so that Windows would see this as a USB device so once I did that I was able to follow the instructions here which is basically just to uh, add the tools necessary for the Arduino program to program ESP8266 or ESP32 boards and then he has actually listed code that's needed for the ESP32 or further down the ESP8266 so here's the code and then at the bottom of the page there's a link to download the code for the 8266 or the ESP32 so I downloaded the code and then followed the instructions which basically are in the sketch sorry I'm bouncing up and down on this web page the only changes I need to do after opening the Arduino program and loading in the sketch downloaded that I just showed, change the SSID and password in the sketch. Okay, so let's see where is it? Uh, there it is. Right here, SSID R2D2 ESP8266. 
password one two three four five six seven eight nine. So I changed this to a different name. I put a different password in there, and after programming the device, it shows up on my phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot with the name that I chose, which was R2D2 Touch, and then the password I chose. So I can log into it, and my phone will be connected to it as a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then I can run the R2 Touch app on my phone, which my phone is an Android phone, so there's a iPhone version and an Android version, so I downloaded the Android version, and down at the bottom here, you need to go into the R2 Touch app and make changes, change the IP address, and change the receiver port. So I did those two things, and I was able to get the R2 Touch app to connect, at least, um, I, and I can't show that because obviously I'm filming with my phone and the app is on my phone, although I guess I could have got my tablet out and tried it there. Uh, but the uh, Wi-Fi icon in the app is blinking, and I believe that's because I don't have a Markduino connected to this. All I've got is this unit running, making a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then it's not communicating with a Markduino, so it's basically not doing anything but making a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can connect to and have no internet access, just access to this little board. So he shows what you need to do on these boards. Basically, you need to connect your voltage, ground, transmit, and receive pull them off the pins of the boards and connect them like you would your XB voltage ground transmit and receive. And at that point supposedly it will work just like an XB and let you use the app to control R2D2 over Wi-Fi with your phone or tablet. Um, there are some gotchas. Uh, the ESP8266-01, I guess, is slightly different. It runs on three um, volts instead of five. So I would stay away from that one so that you're using a board that runs off five volts which is what your R2-D2 is likely to have and unlikely to have 3.3 volts. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I know that's not exactly a as detailed of a run through, but um, the R2 Touch user's guide on Curious Mark's website, and I will put links to uh, the driver file if you happen to get an 8266 like I did um, that has the same CP210 chip on it, and the R2 Touch or um, printed droid site that explains how you set it up. And also a link to the Curious Mark user's guide for the R2 Touch app because the link is not working right on his site. Um, if you click on the link on his site, it took me to the Markduino board web page, not to the user's guide, but I was able to find a link just by googling it to the user's guide so I'll, I'll put that in this video. So it basically tells you how to set it up and I believe these screenshots are from the iPhone version and are probably old so it might look a little bit different but it's this does look similar enough to the the one that I downloaded and have running on my phone that it all makes sense and it's basically the same stuff but it looks just a tiny bit different. Um, here it tells you about the Wi-Fi status indicator, which like I said, mine is not solid green. Uh, Mark's videos on his website show it solid green. And from the comments here, I believe that, like I said, I believe mine is blinking because it's trying to contact a Mark Duino board. And I obviously don't have it connected to anything right now. 
um, tools option to go into your settings, change the IP and the port number that the printed droid site tells you to do. And it shows you some of the things you can do, opening and closing panels using this, playing sound effects, all kinds of cool things that you can do with your phone instead of a remote. Which is more detailed than I kind of wanted to get into in this video, I guess. I was just kind of assuming that people understand um, if they've gotten that far in their builds that they are looking for an XB to communicate with their droid. Um, they do have an option to save a bunch of money and get a cheap ESP32 or ESP8266 module that should do the same thing for less money. It might not have the same range. There are ways that you can add an external antenna, but they are a little bit iffy because basically you scratch off some of the uh, coating here for the antenna which is this little copper trace and you hook an external connector that can connect to an external antenna. Um, I think that for my use I don't think I need that much range because it will probably just need to be you know six ten feet from wherever I am to wherever the droid is if I'm using it. I think I should probably be fine. So just wanted to make a video of some more progress getting the Wi-Fi connection set up which I think is the last board that I needed to actually program because I've got the Mark Markduino's programmed, the Arduino programmed, and now the Wi-Fi module programmed. So I think as far as just being able to hook stuff up and do the routines that are already set up by default on those devices. Um, I should be ready to actually connect some stuff up now and see if they interact with each other.